Hey everyone, it's me, Ex Canadensis, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of Draculaura from the new Generation 3 2022 reboot of Monster High. I'm so excited. These actually release on October 1st, but an eBay seller put them up early, so I managed to get a hold of her early, and I'm so excited! So, I really enjoy the new boxes. I do an in-depth tour of the boxes in my last Monster High review, which was of the new Cleo doll. And we will compare those two as well because they do have different body types. And you can see Count Fabulous is back. And on Draculaura's box, we can actually see Laguna, which is interesting because the Laguna doll has not been spotted yet. And Claudine. On the side of the box, we have a bunch of icons that are related to Draculaura, which is super cute. Oh my gosh, Count Fabulous looks amazing. This is the UPC, in case anybody needs it. And the batch code for mine. It's hard to see. There you go. Monster High on the side of the box here, and the back of the box. It says her monster type is that she is a fantastic vampire. Her monster must-haves are her SPF 500 and cherry juice, which are accessories that the doll actually comes with. Her pet is Count Fabulous, of course. And then, since this is the international box, it has less information than probably the US release box does, unless the US release also has the international box. We don't know yet. All right, so let's get her out of the box. All right, y'all, so we got Draculaura out of the box, and she's so beautiful. I think she translated the best into Generation 3 so far. She just looks so good. Her and Cleo were my top favorites, but after seeing both of them in person, they're the two that I managed to get and the two that I wanted to get, so I'm very happy that I did. Draculaura is definitely superior. Her face is so pretty. I love the heart-shaped shine in her eye, and we're gonna lift her bangs to show the eyebrows. I love the thicker eyebrows with individually painted hairs on. So, so beautiful. And the eye shape, she's really gorgeous. I think a lot of people who aren't super into the reboot and don't like the new look will still be able to uh, relate to this Draculaura. They'll be able to relate her to the G1 Draculaura because she just turned out really, really good. I love her lip color and her little fangs painted on. And she does still have her heart birthmark in some form. It's just a small black heart this time. And the paint quality on the face is really high. It doesn't look super printed or anything. It's just a tampo stamp, most likely. Looks pretty good. It's a strange texture on the black heart on her cheek, though. I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, okay, so one of my favorite things about the Generation 3 reboot so far, funny enough, is the ears on the dolls. I think it's so cute. So you can see that she has her elf ears that she had before, but they stick out a little more, so you can actually see them. They're not molded um, backward on the head. And the earrings. I don't know. Because the earrings were always such a prominent feature on the Monster High dolls, they always had really cool individually molded earrings. They weren't just like studs and stuff every time. They always had unique earrings. I'm really excited that the ears are more prominent so that we can actually see the earrings better. I think that's so cool. And she has this little headband. I do think the headband is quite chunky, but that's probably what they were going for because I know they can make a thinner headband than this. And mine does have a little bit of paint missing, unfortunately on the black glossy part. Moving to the back, we can check out her hair rooting. So she does have a middle part all the way to the back. Around the back middle, I'd say. And then the rooting is actually extremely dense. We'll actually check the pink section because it's a bit easier to tell. As you can see, super, super dense rooting pattern. I'm very impressed, actually. It's denser than a lot of the Generation 1 Monster High Dolls, which is very impressive to me um, and something I wasn't expecting. And if you're wondering, her hair is Saran, which is the same material most of the old Monster High Dolls used. The old Monster High Dolls either had Saran or Kinecline. Kinecline is no longer produced, so the only hair fiber that could be used from G1 is Saran. And that's the hair fiber that we're seeing on Draculaura and Cleo, so that's really exciting to me. Hopefully it is used on the other characters. I believe it's used on Frankie, but I don't think it's used on Claudine, but I can't say that with certainty because I don't have them in my hands yet. All right, so now we're going to move down a little bit so we can take a look at her outfit. I love this outfit that she has on. So she has this little crop top that appears to actually be a separate piece. Please be a separate piece. Oh, it is. Okay, so later on when we do the body comparison, I'll take off each of these pieces so that you can see them all individually. So she has this undershirt with a plastic necklace actually hidden underneath the bow on the undershirt, which is so cool. And it's just this poofy see-through pink outfit. It's super cute. And it has these long 
Um, it's not really a coattail, it's in the front. It's just like a really large oversized shirt. It has really, really cute ruffles on the front. Really nice piece, very well constructed. It looks super cute. I love the extra detail at the shoulders as well. Love it. And then this is satin and it actually has decorative stitching, which is quite impressive. I didn't normally see decorative stitching from even the original Monster High Dolls. I know some had it, but usually no. So this is actually really cool. Um, and it really helps create more dimensionality to this outfit. And I, I really love this little bat shaped bow it's so cute and the underside of it is actually black so that it's not obvious that it's not that same material on both sides which i appreciate a lot it's very cool and then if we move down a little bit more we can check out that she actually has a ring just like ever after high she has this big ring on her finger i love this it's just a little brilliant cut gem all pink super cute though i really like it and i bet that's going to be a lot um easier to keep hold of than Operetta and Nefra's rings, which I actually still have from my childhood, but um, they were difficult to keep. And then here are her shorts. They're overall pretty simple, but I love that they're actually cuffed. It's not a printed on cuff. And I know what you're thinking. Do they print on cuffs on pants and shorts? Yeah, they do. Mattel does that. So this is great. And it's just a simple printed heart with fangs pattern. Very cute. And they are high-waisted. Alrighty, now down a little more, we can check out her shoes and socks, which are so cute so she has these black netted socks that go up to about mid calf and i really like these i love the little ruffles up top and then her shoes are pretty simple compared to the other um i mean compared to some of the other ones that i've seen but i think they're really cute they're just simple little pink heels with little heart bats you know <laughs> little heart bats i think they're very cute she comes with a bunch of super cute accessories so we're going to be putting this little capelet on her in just a moment and it's just on a cardboard hanger. It would have been so cool if they were actual hangers, but they do say Monster High on them, which is quite cute. Fun. And it's really nice quality. I really like the material. And then we have her cherry juice. The lid does come off, so I guess you could put juice in there. I don't recommend it, though. And you can see the printing method that Mattel likes to use on some of the dolls' faces. You can actually see it here, but I'm glad that they didn't do it on the dolls. And then this little pretzel that actually comes out of the wrapper, and it's a little creepy pretzel that has a little face on it. Very cute. And the wrapper is spiderweb theme. And all of the accessories either are large enough that the doll can hold them with the normal handle or they have a little finger handle, which is so helpful. Uh, and then she has her eye coffin, which has that same pixelated printing, but I don't mind if it's on like a phone screen. And it's quite cool the way that they put the little finger hold on so that she can hold it in like a realistic looking position. And I love the little bat. And spiderweb, heart fangs, so cool. Count Fabulous is so cute. He actually does have the pixelated printing, funny enough, on his eyes. But I don't mind. I really appreciate the gradient printing on the wings and the inner ears. And I'm glad that Count Fabulous came back. He's really cute. Sunglasses, which we will be putting on her with the capelet. SPF 500. It's not the same mold as before, but it's back. Her Gloom Beach doll came with this, if you didn't know. And then... Her backpack, which really opens so you can put a bunch of this stuff inside. Super cute. All right, so now I'm going to have her hold a bunch of her accessories. Here's what Draculaura looks like with some of her accessories. So I have the capelet, the sunglasses, the cherry juice, and the phone. I love the way they did the handle on the phone. It looks so good. And then the cherry juice is super easy to put on her hand, and I will show you how the other accessories work. So this is going to be backward, but or you could put it on the thumb, I guess, but I'm going to put it right here. And you can see that she's holding it. Super easy. And it actually holds on quite nicely. Like, if I were to shake her around, the phone doesn't fall off. So that's pretty cool. Love it. Alrighty, so now I'm going to remove all this stuff so we can compare it to the other dolls. Alright, so I've brought over a G1, G2, and G3 Draculaura. So this is original ghouls. So this is actually the reproduction of her from 2015. This is G2 Shriekwrecked Draculaura. And G3 2022 Draculaura. And the... The height difference with this doll, just so you know, is because she has really tall shoes on, but... So these two dolls are about the same height, but this one is actually shorter. You can see that here. Funny enough, this doll is actually wearing platform shoes, and this one has slight platforms, but not as tall, so... It's just an interesting thing to compare here. She is shorter, and it's not just that all of the G3 dolls are shorter. She is actually shorter than the other G3 characters, so you can see that Cleo is taller. So I'm really excited that not only are we getting new body types, which we're going to get into in a little bit, 
we're actually getting different heights too, which is so exciting because Draculaura was shorter in the show, but her doll was not shorter. So cool. All right, so now we are going to compare all of these dolls that I have before us. We're gonna undress them all so that we can check out their bodies. All right, so I've got all of the dolls gathered here nude so that we can compare their bodies to each other. And I also wanted to show all the different outfit pieces. So here is that undershirt, which is so cute and could work as an overshirt. Awesome. And then this is the little crop top. Super cute, very, very nice construction on all of these pieces. The shorts. And then the shoes and stuff are kind of self-explanatory when they're off the dolls. So all of these outfit pieces are backwards compatible, so you can put them on Gen 2 and Gen 1. But these pieces, you're going to have a hard time fitting on Draculaura. Any pieces that are tight on Gen 1 and 2 are going to be difficult to put onto Gen 3. But anything that's kind of loose, you can do. So I'm going to try a couple of things, and I'll show you where I'm successful. I also wanted to, after we take a look at the body, show the shoe compatibility, because that's that's important. I, it's important to me too. I'd like to see what shoes they can share. So as you can see, compared to the other Gen 3 dolls, Draculaura is considerably shorter, has much thicker thighs, and actually a thicker waist. It looks like potentially they could share some outfit pieces, but not all. Um, but I really like this. It's really exciting. It's really cool that Mattel is doing this. It came out of nowhere with Monster High. I was not expecting it at all. And I just love the height difference so much. And then you can see Gen 2 is a bit thicker than Gen 1. The Gen 1 dolls are super delicate and spindly. The Gen 2 dolls got a little bit thicker, but still basically the same body. And then Gen 3, as you can see, they've taken a noticeable shift away. Although they do conserve the overall body shape with the sway back and the smaller bust and the larger hips. Pretty cool. And then also somebody asked me this on my TikTok and I was like, I should answer this in one of these YouTube reviews. So I'm going to do it here. The articulation on the chest actually does spin all the way around. So it's a full range of motion at the chest. And yeah, all the other joints are fairly comparable to the originals. You can hit a right angle here. Mostly, you know, just everything you're used to with Monster High. Pretty cool. Alrighty, so now we're going to test out some clothing compatibility. First, I'm going to show you the shoes because I can just do that really fast. So tight shoes will not fit on the new dolls because the new dolls actually have thicker or like wider feet and shorter arches. So like shoes like this, I'm not even going to try it. That could hurt them. Shoes like G2 shoes especially, but also strappy sandals in general. Overall fit, if they're too strappy though, you can really tell that the shoe is too small. So as you can see, or sorry, too big. It's not bad, but it's noticeable. And then with the Gen 2 shoes, we're going to try them on the Gen 1 Draculaura. They fit, like, pretty well. I would call that a fit. It's not great, but if you, like, rubber banded it on, it could work. But, you know. Because the original signature Draculaura has such a tight outfit, it doesn't fit super well. I can get the skirt on, kind of. Um... I couldn't do that, but the looser dress that comes with Shrew Correct Draculaura does fit. It doesn't close all the way in the back, but that's no big deal to me. Um, and then this piece, if I took in the shorts in the back so that they were higher-waisted like they're meant to be, like, they'll sit at the normal waist, but these are meant to be higher-waisted. Um, that would be super cute if you, like, took them in there, but um, I just wanted to show it because people would definitely ask about the clothing compatibility. I also wanted to just show the faces of these two in particular up close. So I do have a reproduction, Draculaura, who's not the cutest in my opinion, but I wanted to also show, oops, sorry about that. I feel like this Dracula is quite pretty. This is fear-leading Draculaura. You can see the differences in the faces. I was never the biggest fan of the Generation 1 Draculaura faces. There's a few that I find gorgeous, like my Gloom Beach Draculaura, but I don't know. It was pretty rare to me, and this is my opinion, that the Draculaura dolls really looked like Draculaura um, and were really, really beautiful. So... I really genuinely prefer this face so much. It's so, so pretty. All right, let me get everybody back in their outfits so we can finish off this review. I wanted to share this too. I really feel like I should have mentioned this in my Cleo review, but the joints do still come out for easy clothing changes, but they're actually a lot thicker than before and they pop in a lot more satisfyingly. So I'll show you taking one out. These are a bit tighter than the wrist because these don't come out as often for clothing changes, but... They're in there pretty tight, and then they go back in, <laughs> as I say that, pretty easily. And then I will put the hand back in as well. There you go. And then the hand coming out. So it feels less like your doll is going to break. I never personally broke any Monster High dolls at the elbow or at the wrist, but I know it happened to others, so 
um, I thought it was worth pointing out that Mattel made the the pegs thicker. All right, y'all. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And I'd love to know what you guys think of Generation 3 of Monster High in general, and especially of Draculaura, as she's the one in this review. I'm in love. I cannot believe we're getting new body types, and I'm excited to see other new characters, or other old characters, and some new characters emerge and see what different body types and heights we do get. I'm really curious to see Abby, especially. It seems Abby is all but confirmed at this point. Um... Will she be substantially taller than the others now, like you would expect her to be? Will she be thicker as well? I'm just very curious. I'm completely in love. I This doll is just breathtaking. She's incredible. I love Draculaura in the show as a character, and her dolls always had like really, really cool concepts, but something about a lot of the dolls' faces I didn't connect with a lot, with the exceptions being Ghoul's Rule and Gloom Beach when I was younger, and then now... Um, beach Beasties or Swim Class and Haunted I connect with a lot, um, but I got those dolls more recently, of course. Um, but I just think this doll really hit it out of the park. And she looks really good next to other G1 dolls, too. I just, this is a stellar doll. This is a stellar doll, and I love, I just love it. I just love it. And at $25, if you compare this directly to, like, a Series 1 Rainbow High doll, yeah, obviously that doll is worth more. But considering Rainbow High Dolls have gone up by like around $10, so now the standard price for a Rainbow High Doll is around $35, I think this doll is pretty fairly priced considering the market right now with other dolls that are on the shelves. I think the Saran hair is fantastic. The rooting is really well done. All of the pieces on the doll are super well done. Decent quality, if not high quality. I would say these two are pretty high quality and this is like pretty decent quality. I love all the little accessories she comes with as well. I really appreciate when dolls come with fun accessories like that. Um, that's always my favorite. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching for real this time. Bye!